Hello, I'm Dr. Pamela Mertens. I'm the head ed link trainer for LDOE, and I'm going to show you how to complete your in-home application. Okay, it shouldn't be a terribly long session, but I do want to go over some of the tools in the dashboard before we dive into the application itself. Okay, so up here at the top, we're going to go over some of the little tools here, the navigation tools. This is what we refer to as a hamburger, these three hash lines. If you click on that, It'll expand your viewing, okay? And if you click back on those, your menu comes back. Now, please make sure that you are completing this application on a regular computer or laptop. Please do not use a tablet or try to use your phone. You will not have functionality um, on most of the, um, the things that you need to submit within the application, okay? You also need to be using Chrome browser or Edge preferably Chrome, okay? So over here, getting back to the tools, this is called a carrot. And when you click on the carrot, there's a, it's a drop down, and usually you have submenus underneath it, okay? Now this is where you'd sign out. Your name will be right here. Sign out, and if you click sign out, you still get the chance to say no, okay? You can cancel or continue on with your closing out, okay? All right, so right here, you won't have this part. This is mine for training, but you will see this, okay? This will be shifted up. You'll have your entity or entities listed here when you click on the drop down. If you only have one, you're only going to see one. If you have several, click here and you just see them all listed if you've requested permission, okay? Now, usually with in home, it's usually not an issue. It's usually just one location. So you should see just your name here, okay? Now your in-home and your family homes are titled uh, by your name, not a center name, okay? So we use your name for those. So your entity would be your name. All right, so this is your dashboard. This is where we are right now, okay? So provided that you have the correct entity dashboard and you request permission to your, your site, you will see this same information displayed or similar information displayed on your dashboard. It'll say, welcome back and your name, okay? If you're still seeing welcome and your name and then two big blue buttons in the middle of your screen, you have not requested permission yet. So please make sure you go to the EdLink training page and look for that giant button that says accessing EdLink and it'll walk you through how to do that, okay? It's also in the in-home user guide that's at the bottom of the EdLink training page. All right, so you'll have your entity listed here in your address. We want to make sure that your status is open. Again, this is a fictitious application. Make sure your provider number is correct. Okay, over here on the right side, helpful links. These are all of the links um, to the documents that you'll need to provide within your application, things that you need to update or complete. Okay. Now, if any of this information is incorrect, then I want you to complete a support ticket immediately on that same EdLink training page. Okay. Um, let them know very specifically what is incorrect so that that can be corrected for you before you begin your renewal. All right, so let's move down here now to pending applications. Now you won't see anything underneath here unless you're a pre-existing provider and you've made changes uh, to your entity. You may see something down here pending, but if that is you, if that's the case, you will know whether or not you've completed another application. You can only have one application open per site at any given time. So if you do have, excuse me, if you do have something pending, then you cannot begin your renewal or any other entity changes until that has been approved or withdrawn by you, okay? Once it's approved or withdrawn by you, then your renewal button will become active again and or you could begin one of your entity management changes or one of your management changes over here and there are videos on the EdLink training page that are short that show you how to use each of these, OK? 
Okay, you would not use these unless you have already renewed or several months away from renewing. Okay, everything should be done within your renewal if possible. If there is a special circumstance, then please get with your provider certification administrator and let him or her know um, what if there are any extenuating circumstances that require you to go ahead and use that. Okay. All right. And then down here, you'll have your messages and notifications, and you can always see more. Now, the messages and notifications are computer generated, EdLink generated. And this is not an open form for email. So you can't communicate with your consultant through here or anybody else. These are just messages that come through to you to let you know whether we need something or something status. Okay. Now, over here on the left side, like I was just referring to, we have entity management. Now, entity management, you do have a couple areas that you can interact with and not have to submit an application and it won't hold up your application. Okay, so the first one, now you can view all of these. You can go through. It's good to do every now and then just to make sure all your information is correct. Okay. You can change your contacts if you want to. So that's one area you can change. Okay, your entity documents. You can upload or download any documents down here at the bottom where it says add new. Down here, you'll see a list of all the documents that you submitted for your application or for your licensing or certification. You can always add new for safekeeping. Um, now, these documents that you add new, sometimes your provider certification administrator will ask you to upload a document um, just to show that something has been updated, like an inspection. Um, they'll ask you to add it here. So you just click on the add new and select the document. Okay, and you'll upload it here. Now, this does not cause the creation of an application. So this is another area where you can still interact and it won't mess up your uh, renewal options, okay? Up here, um, once your renewal is in place, then you'll see uh, state generated documents that will be up here. Um, your certifications, any licensing, any CCAP information. You'll be able to click on the link and open the PDF and download that document or just view it, okay? And you can sort up here. You'll have more as the years go on, okay? Then you have your rates and fees. You can make sure that they're correct. Health and safety. Of course, we have all the links for complaints and incidents. Okay, and then you have your Kinder Connect if you are a CCAP recipient. Okay, and I'm not gonna click on it because there's nothing on that page because I don't have any uh, children linked to it, but this is where your Kinder Connect is, okay? So in entity management, if you'll write this down, you can view all of this, okay? But the only ones that you can interact with without completing an application are your contacts, entity documents, and Kinder Connect. Okay, and staff management usually isn't an issue for in-home or used very often by in-home. But in case you have support staff, make sure that all your support staff is added within your renewal. Okay, so much easier. Um, if you have any issues, maybe, for instance, you just renewed last month, but now you're bringing on support staff now, okay? Obviously, you're not going to complete another renewal. So if you have to add a staff member, it will have to be approved by LDOE, okay? So you'll add the staff member the same way you're adding yourself, and we'll go through the application here in just a moment. Financial management. This is something uh, that would be considered extenuating circumstances. Um, we can't have your banking information be incorrect. You know, we want to make sure that you're getting the CCAP payments, um, any other uh, payments you should be receiving. So if your banking institution is incorrect or has changed or you feel it's been compromised, then by all means, go ahead and complete this. It's very straightforward. You're just going to click on here. Click on your CCAP information, CCAP and banking, and then you're going to change that information, okay? And you also have a transaction history here for any time that you've paid. All right, and of course, we have messages, and that's pretty basic. We went over that just a minute ago. Account settings, 
Okay, this is your profile. You cannot change your profile. Okay, don't be misled. Okay, this is just for me. Don't be misled. You cannot change your profile, not without a developer's assistance. Okay, notification settings. We've defaulted those to all emails and text. You can even put your text or your cell phone number in here. Now you won't get detailed notifications, but you will receive messages that tell you something has changed within your Edlink account and to log in to see what that might be, okay? Password and security. The only downside to this is you have to actually be in your Edlink account to change uh, your password using this option. This is an option that would be used by somebody who didn't forget the password, but feel like it might need to be changed, updated, or it's been compromised, okay? And then this location, you should be familiar with this to where you did your entity access request, and then you selected Edlink Security, and then you requested access to your site. Now, when you get back to this page, you can always click on this page again. You'll see a list of the sites that you have access to, which for you, it will probably just be your own site. Okay, so let's go back to the dashboard and start this application. All right, let's start renewal over here on the right side. If you have quick links, in other words, if you have green buttons here, there shouldn't be too many of you left, but if you do, you'll use that far right green button. It should be dark green that says submit renewal. Okay, so we're gonna start renewal. Okay, and now we're at the renewal application homepage. You're going to frequent this page quite often. Okay, this is how you keep record of what steps you've completed and which steps you need to continue working on. I'm gonna go ahead and expand this with a little hamburger because you don't need that menu open while you're doing this. Okay, make sure you're reading everything on the page. Everything is instructional or informational, especially these banners. Don't close out of it automatically. Please read the instructions first. Okay, so this one is letting you know that you have to go through them chronologically, then you can go back through them in any order. Um, once you complete a badge, you'll have a green completed underneath it. And once you complete, or if you have one that's incomplete, it will be yellow. And ones that haven't been visited yet are inactive. I'm clicking on this right now and nothing's happening. Okay. The ones that you are permitted to visit first are the bright blue and see how it's active when I put my cursor over it. Okay. All right. So let's start with this one. And if you notice right there on the instructions or the step, it said modify and verify because you're doing a renewal. Um, if you were doing a new application, of course, you're just going to put new information in. OK, but with renewal, things uh, the information that you had on your certification or licensing last year is transferred over into this year's application. So it will save you a lot of time. However, you do have to verify everything and anywhere there's information missing, you have to add, okay? All right, so let's see. So now with our instructions, I would recommend that you expand all on the right side. You can always collapse or expand. And even if you're a veteran provider, I want you to read through these. Some of the regulations, some of the guidelines, fees, Things have changed a little bit, okay, over the last two or three years. So make sure that you're reviewing your bulletin, bulletin 137, 139. They're not very long, okay, but it's good to have those downloaded and saved so that you'll have all the information that you need. And you can also have the section 311 here, click, download it, and save it, okay? And if you click here, it provides you with assistance in making sure that you know where to go to get all of your certifications renewed, okay? Or for the first time. Okay, the next part you have your CCCBC, which if you're a renewal, you're very familiar with your background check. Um, in order to submit the renewal, everyone in the household support staff and providing will need to have an eligible background. If you do not show an eligible background um, as in no match, then you'll need to contact CCCBC personally and make sure that they have all the information correct in their system. If they do, then we can have a developer 
refresh your status so that you can get moving along in that, okay? Emergency preparedness plan, you can use the one that you had last year, but you do need to make sure that it has been updated. And that means with current dates, people, locations, and the plan itself, okay? Make sure it is updated. We have a template that you may use, okay? Provider agreement and provider rate agreement. You'll download this and you'll sign it and then you upload it into the, um, the appropriate space in the application for that. Current state and fire marshal inspection. Okay. Now, as you know, as a renewal, that your CCAP is dependent upon all of your credentials being up to date and that includes your fire marshal inspection. This doesn't mean that you need to wait to the last minute to get your fire marshal inspection. Um, you can start a few months ahead of time because there is a, a slow um, response or uh, they're very overworked. So put that request in and as soon as you get that inspection, let your provider certification administrator know that you've completed that inspection and she will give you instructions on how to upload that, okay? Pictures of the residents. It says right here what we need from you, space where care will be provided, which is almost everywhere in a home. So um, please be sure to provide a well-rounded um, account of where the child will be cared for. Okay, And if you are using your phone to take these pictures, which most people are, just know that the file size can be a little bit large, usually around seven megabytes. That's a lot of memory, especially if you've taken about 20 pictures, um, even four or five pictures. So when you email them to yourself and save them to the hard drive, there is a process on making sure that that file size is not too large to upload. Okay, EdLink will take 10 megabytes, but your computer will not, okay? Um, on the EdLink training page, there is a document that is titled Scanning and Uploading Documents. It's in the top section, and that will provide you with a proper profile so that those files don't get too large for you. Okay, additional supporting documents are only going to be requested if you're providing transportation or some type of service that requires additional documentation. Okay, you'll need verification of checking your savings. Now, if you did this last year and you've already uploaded your direct deposit authorization form and completed your checking information and nothing has changed, um, then you don't need to do anything, okay? You can leave it as is or upload your original direct deposit authorization form. Double check your banking information, the manual section and make sure everything is typed correctly though. Okay, verification of rates. Okay, now you're gonna submit how you notified your parents of what your rates are and your rate changes. Okay, now remember this renewal is based upon last year's certification and services that you're offering, okay? So we're gonna hit, yes, I agree and save. And now I'm gonna use this, this, this return to application button here will be on almost every single page just to show you what it looks like. Okay, this is what it's gonna look like when you complete a step. Okay, so let's go to step two now. This is your funding source. Now you may or may not take uh, participate in CCAP, okay? That is your choice to do, although we like to see that all of our providers are doing that. Um, it does help ensure that children are receiving the nutrition they need throughout the day. Um, benefits for the provider as well, okay? But we're gonna leave it in there, but you can always uncheck it, okay? And again, this is pulling up what you had last year. So if it's not broke, don't fix it. Okay, just leave it the way that it is unless something has um, legitimately changed. Now, if last year you didn't accept CCAP and this year you want to, just simply check it. <clears throat> and that's perfectly fine. And you'll go through the motions and the application to get approval for that. Okay, so in-home provider name. Now, remember what I was saying earlier, the in-home provider is by name, okay? Enter the provider's name, okay? We don't name them like centers, so we're not doing Molly's daycare, okay? It's Molly Hampton, okay? Mo just Molly Hampton, just the name, okay? 
And I'm going to leave that one just as it is right now. Actually, I will edit it and show you how to do that. So in the renewal, all of your edits will be over here on the right side of the buttons. It's It can be a little frustrating at first, clicking in here and going, why won't this change? Okay, don't forget to click the edit button on the right side. It opens it up for you. Okay, and now you hit save. Okay, and the school and center finder, we'll go over that in just a moment, okay? All right, so let's move down. Now, of course, the physical address you can't change, okay? You know when, with an in-home um, provider, if you change your physical location, it requires a new application, and you also need to make sure that you have approval from CCAP and the state before you make that change with your business, okay? You can change the mailing address, though, so you can click Edit, and you can make changes in here, okay? And then you'll save the same way we did up top. Okay, and then this one, I'm glad that this one is filled out because I wanted you to see the URLs in here. This is a free promotional plug. So this is free marketing from the state. All you need to do is enter your social media URLs, okay? Anywhere you um, have your, your, I guess you could say your in-home daycare, daycare uh, business listed or maybe talk about it or showing pictures of it okay it's a chance for you to share with parents uh, and other providers too so that they can recommend you um, you'll update your phone number now this email address this email address is not um, connected in any way to edlink let me show you where this is okay so if we go back up to school and center finder this is what will open up Okay, and anytime we open a link in your application, it won't hinder your application. You simply close it out when we're finished, just that page. Okay, so let's look for, oh goodness, let's see if we can find, okay. So here we go, right here. Here is an in-home care. Let's see what we have here. Let's see what comes up for her. Okay, hers is not updated yet. This is what yours is going to look like though. I just randomly picked a name. So there's probably so many, um, but you'll see your last name here. You'll select it. And I'm gonna select a center because I know the centers are updated right now. And I wanna show you what you're going to see. Okay, you're gonna see your name, your email, your contact, your location, all that you offer, your inspection uh, history right here. Okay, and of course you won't see academic performance. You're just going to see this top page. You won't have anything active in there, but you can also discuss down here um, if you're offering any type of music lessons or any academic offerings. Just because you're in home does not mean that you don't have the opportunity to do those wonderful things. Okay, so this is this is free. Anything that you put on this bottom section will be on that page, okay? So we're going to save and continue. Remember, if you don't have changes to make, no reason to click edit. Okay, service and hours. This is a very important page here, okay? Because this has a little bit of a caveat to it that you have to pay attention to carefully. Okay, so service and hours. Last year, you were taking care of um, one year to five year, okay? Well, this year, I'm bringing in an infant. So I'm going to hit edit. And instead of years, I'm gonna do months. And notice how the safety approved crib statement pops up for any care that's being given to a child under a year. You have to make sure that you read this, make sure that you meet all those standards and you will need to sign your name and date it today's date every single time you come back into this application. We wanna make sure you do not overlook the safety of those children. So this is a mandated area you cannot submit the application until that date is current. Now, if it's the same day, you're fine, but if you come in another day, you do always have to change that. So make it a habit of always going to your service and hours, updating that date before you work on any more of your application. Okay, I'm gonna hit save. And then next year, if that's not the case, or if I change that throughout the year, I'm simply going to do the same thing. I'm gonna edit, put that back at year, and this statement goes away, okay? So the next portion is our operating hours. We default this to all months during the year, but you can change that. We're gonna to go to edit, 
let's say you're not open all year or you decided not to be anymore. Because remember, this is what was on it last year. This time you're cutting back. You're only going to do May through September, some summer months, okay? And you're going to tell us from when to when. And if you're 24 hours, you'll click yes, and you'll have a 24-hour clock here. So you don't do any more with the hours, except for choose your days. Now, if you are, uh, let's see, we want to change your time. We're going to do time to 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Okay, just a partial day. Okay, but you're going to be open Monday through Friday. So we're going to hit copy to all. And notice how all of these times changed. Okay. Now, if you are open all year, you'll simply go back up here to yes. And then these two disappear. And this stays the same. Okay. It's pretty simple. You can't break it. So don't worry. Even if you hit say, you can still go back and change it. See that edit button? Okay. See how it highlights? Okay, or darkens. Okay, so let's move down here. Additional services, special needs is a federal mandate, so you cannot uncheck that. But if you are offering transportation, let's say uh, for field trips, okay, and in home, usually, usually you're kind of limited to some of these here, not necessarily the before and after care, but maybe you have summer holiday hours. Maybe you do offer half day rates. Okay, you check what you want to do. Now, remember, it's going to show you what you did last year. That doesn't mean that you can't add or remove some of those services. Okay, so I'm just adding transportation this time around. But if I were to add summer holidays, another time block opens up for me to dictate what those holiday hours are going to be. So if you do provide care on the 4th of July or Christmas, especially to shift workers, first responders who don't get days off. Okay, you can let them know what hours you will be open on those days. Okay. Now I'm going to remove the summer holidays. And I only pick transportation, hit save. Okay, and now I'm going to continue. Okay, the ownership type that is going to stay the same. That will be individual. However, if your numbers down here, your federal EIN, your state tax ID number are incorrect, this is editable. You can change those numbers in there to make sure that they are correct and hit save and continue. Now, this is the provider information. Okay, so this is the provider. So we're going to put... Okay, and now we have our phone number. We have our email. Is this employee an emergency contact? Yes. Okay, you will always be an emergency contact for in-home and you will always be working at the center for provider. Okay, so make sure you toggle these over to the right. If you do forget to toggle these, you will have an opportunity later on, but please make sure you watch the video on how to do that. Okay, you want to watch to the end. Okay, do you have any additional names that you've used in the last five years? Okay, if you have, you're simply going to add new. Date started. And a date that it ended and hit check. Now, notice how this is toggled over to yes. Well, I look at this and say, oh, well, wait, that was six years ago. I don't really need that. So I'm going to delete that. This is your trash can. This helps you delete or this does delete. OK, throughout the application, you will see that. Now, this is an edit tool. That's your pencil. So if I had the dates wrong, I could click on that and just change the dates, change the names, whatever I wanted to change. But I just want to get rid of it. So I'm going to click on that. Are you sure you want to delete? Anytime you want to delete something, it's going to ask you this question. Okay, but notice how this is still toggled over to yes. It's waiting on me to add something. If I don't return that to no, then I won't be able to move past this page. It's going to tell me that in section two, I still need to add a name. Okay, so make sure that you look at those errors when they pop up so because it tells you right where you need to go to make that correction. Okay, now this is your address, your physical address and your mailing address, okay? personal identification information. Um, your birth date needs to be specific and correct. 
um, your social security number will redact once you type it in and click away from it, okay? And your identification number, that is a government issued ID, state or federal, usually your driver's license, okay? And your sex and your race, okay? And whether or not you're married. If you're married, you're going to complete your spouse's information the exact same way that you did your information. And you'll hit save and continue. Okay, but I'm going to put no just for time's sake here. And we're going to save and continue. All right, so this doesn't mean that anything is wrong. It just means that it needs to be addressed because there's additional questions in here. All right, so we're going to go into the pencil. Pencil lets us edit. We're going to see what it wants us to fix. So I'm going to change this because I did change the name of the provider. Okay, make sure everything matches. Um, is this employee also a household resident? Okay, I'm going to say yes. Okay, you say whichever one, <laughs> whichever one you want though. Okay, address information. Okay, remember this is the provider. Personal identification. Now, Edlink will not run verifications on whether or not um, on the first page of the provider, whether you put female and African-American or white and male, okay? You need to make sure that those are correct yourself, okay? So the provider, and you'll put your years of experience, date appointed to current role, okay, that's usually the more recent, and then the date hired in capacity would either be the same day or in the past, okay, and you don't need to do anything with this right here. Um, it will um, tabulate or calculate that or verify it throughout the application automatically, okay, but if you do click yes, that's perfectly fine. All right, so here in this yellow banner, again, it has the X, but we don't want you to X out, we want you to read it and all these links are active and they'll take you directly to the training that you need for these documents, okay? But you'll need to have all of these documents. There's six of them that are required for the providers, okay? So you will need exactly what is right here. You will need ELC experience. So ELC experience, that can be one of three things. It can be a letter of recommendation from another provider, another licensed or certified provider attesting to your years of experience. It can also be last year's uh, director of provider qualification letter, or it can be an up-to-date resume. All right. Pediatric first aid, self-explanatory, medication administration, CPR training, pre-service orientation. This is specific to your CCAP. Okay. This is not um, one that you may have done about five or 10 years ago. This is specific to your CCAP. And mandated reporters, that will need to be done yearly and everyone needs to have them, okay? But all of these links will take you to where you can complete those. Now, if I wanted to add new, let's say I want to add, I'll show you how to do all of these real quick, okay? So we're going to... Let's see, we'll just do this. Okay, so to add new, you're going to, and this is how you're gonna add all these documents, okay? You're gonna to go to education training for all of them, except this one, the experience, because that one's down here under experience. So just try to remember that. All are under education and training, except for experience. Now that doesn't mean you can't add certificates and. Um, other experience later, as well as other ed education training. But these are the mand mandatory documents that you need to submit and or you need in order to submit your application. If your provider certification needs something additionally, get these in first, then you can backfill with um, the additional certifications, okay? So we're gonna go to education training. Over here, we'll go to type. And we'll just work our way down the list, picking those um, mandatory ones. We'll do CPR, okay? And expiration, I'm just picking any date. And you browse to find your file. And then you click open. 
and then it uploads it. Now notice how I already had a CPR training. I'll show you this. So we need to make sure that if I upload a new CPR training that we are archiving the old one, okay? But in this case, I was just showing you how to upload your documentation. So education training, let's do the pre-service orientation. And it doesn't matter um, what order you answer these questions in, as long as you address all of them. So let's say I want to do a new file here. I'm gonna delete that one. Okay, hopefully. Okay, it's a training folder, so it's not letting me do it. That's you saw me do it a minute ago, so you should be good. Okay, we're gonna open. Now, this is actually good that this happened though. If you try to override something or upload another document in the same category and type, it's gonna let you know a file is already uploaded. Do you still want to override it? And I'm gonna say yes. Okay, so now I'm gonna hit the check mark. All right, and now I have pre-service orientation up there. Okay, so it's very simple. You will education and training under category type, choose the one that you're trying to upload. Okay, and then you'll simply browse, select it and upload it, okay? Now, when you are completing your renewal and let's say all these were already up there from last year, you do not have to renew your pre-service orientation, okay? All the others you do need to update. So what you're going to do, for instance, for your, let's do one where we had a duplicate. So CPR, I'm gonna put a new one up. So I'm just gonna archive it. Are you sure you want to delete? It's not, even though it says, do you want to delete? It's only archiving. When you see that little filing cabinet icon, that means that it's only icon, or excuse me, archiving it. So you can always retrieve it later. This is a cleanup option so that you can get rid of all that stuff that was there before and just get it out of the way, okay? But you can always locate it later, okay? Now this is gonna pop up for you to put another file in if you want, but if you've already uploaded it all, just hit the X, okay? Once we have all those documents in, we're gonna hit save and close. And now notice my warning is gone, plus I've made the provider with the correct name, okay? And if I wanted to add support staff, we click new and we add their information exactly the same that we just added yours, okay? Now they are only going to be required to have CPR training, pediatric first aid training, and mandated reporters. They only need the three mandatory documents to submit the application. Okay, but I'm gonna cancel. Okay, now do not forget to save and continue. Okay, we want what you just did to be reflected there, okay? All right, so now I'm back into this one. Notice how we have a little red word here. It's just asking us the relationship. Okay, so we're saying that this Kamar, or yes, uh, the Shimmy, um, is the one of the parents, okay? But we need to go in here and make sure that Molly Hampton is identified. Okay, now it, it depends on how we listed Molly. We had Molly as not only the owner of the home, but we also had her as the provider. So it'll be one or the other. So for this instance, we're just gonna select we're gonna select, uh, let's do, we'll do parent. Okay, but remember Molly's the, technically the provider. Okay, uh, staff member, yes. Okay, notice how that went away. Okay. So here you're gonna list all of your residents. And when you add a new resident, you're gonna provide their first name, last name, the relationship, their date of birth, their social ID, just like yours. Now, obviously, if they're babies or don't, um, not at a working age yet, maybe 13, 14, or 15, or something like that, um, they may not have an ID number. 
uh, for infants, for social security numbers. You, if you do not have their social security number yet, you can put zeros, okay? Just make sure you put it in the proper format and it won't let you put more than what you're permitted to have, okay? All right, so I'm, I'm going to hit the X. Make sure that all residents are listed, even those residents that are away at college, but come home during breaks to stay at the home, okay? Now, child's home address, okay? Notice how you cannot change that, okay? Because if you change that, that requires a new application. That's a change of location, okay? So we're gonna hit save and continue. Now we move to the CCCBC. This is where we will see whether or not all the residents have eligible CCCBCs that are over the age of 17, so 18 and older. Now you can refresh. This is just an informational page, um, but it will tell you whether or not you are eligible. Now these are fictitious names, so mine say no match. Mine will never say eligible um, unless I had a developer um, fake that, okay? So I am going to go ahead and move to the next page, but let me show you these. If you're having issues with yours, you can always click on this image here and it takes you straight to their system and you can log in, see your profile, make some changes, maybe uh, contact somebody to, to verify information. Your, uh, any support staff or resident can do that as well. And you can also click here and it takes you to the same page. Okay, so you have a couple options there. So we're gonna save and continue. Now, just to um, let you know on the CCCBC, if you do display or some of the residents and yourself display a no match, then please contact CCCBCS before you contact EdLink support. Okay, once you verify that all the information is correct with CCCBC, then they will um, hopefully provide you with uh, proof of that. And if them updating the information does not change your status once it's refreshed, then we will have a developer assist you with that so that you can carry on with completing your renewal. Okay, this is the emergency preparedness plan step. Again, I wanna take a break here and I wanna go back to return to application home. I wanna show you what it looks like. See all these steps that we finished? Okay, and I just wanna talk about a couple things that might uh, trip you up a little bit here, okay? So the providers and the support staff, um, as long as you put one individual in there and they have an eligible, CCCBC, then EdLink will show that step is complete. However, um, this is definitely important for household members. Um, if you have five household members and only put one in correctly, EdLink doesn't know that there are four additional ones. You have to make sure that all support staff, all providers and household members are listed in these two steps, okay? So let's go back to step nine because you have to kind of circle through it and just hit save and continue. And it'll take us to the emergency preparedness. Okay, so if you had a plan that you already had last year, again, make sure it's uh, applied, or excuse me, addresses all of the elements of this template, or you download this template. Let me see if I can open it right here for you. There you go. Okay, you're gonna open this template here. It's very short. Just make sure that you um, have met all the elements within this template and you can use this and upload it or you can use your old one. So we're just gonna browse. I'm just gonna grab a file. Okay. And you don't have to hit check mark or anything. This one's kind of an automatic save here. There you go. And if you wanna change it, remember there's the trash can. If you wanna look at what you uploaded, you click on the eyeball and it'll open in on base, okay? Emergency plan requirements. You can download this if you're going to um, try to revise or create one from scratch. You can also, it'll also reference the template and why it's asking for what, okay? All right, and your emergency contacts. So we need one 
according to this, we need one on-site and one off-site, which we do. We've met that requirement here. Now, these do not have to be employees. They don't have to be residents. Your off-site needs to be somebody away from that home. Okay, so you can add an off-site. So let's do this. We're going to add new. The off-sites can only be added on this page. Okay, the on-sites have to be completed on their staff page. Okay, the provider staff page or support page. So we hit the check mark. Okay, and let's see, this SSS no longer works for me. So I'm just gonna delete this person. Now, let's say that person did still work for me, but they don't wanna be an emergency contact anymore. That's fine. Deleting them here does not delete them from your support staff list or your roster, I should say. Okay, you can have as many offsite and on site that you want. Okay, just remember your provider and your homeowner are almost always going to be um, or would always be your emergency contacts. Okay, for on site. Okay, now if I want to edit, remember I can edit with a pencil. Maybe her name has changed instead of just putting Sally, I'm going to put Sally Brown. Okay, and we're going to save and continue. Here's the CCAP page. Okay. So for the veteran providers who are used to receiving CCAP, um, I still highly recommend that you read through this. It's not as much as what you would think, but I want you to grab the scroll bar, okay, move down, look at the different dates, look at the different regulations. It will not take you, but about 10 minutes probably, okay? And you have to have this scroll bar manually toggled down all the way down to the bottom, pull it all the way down, before this accepted button will be activated, okay? Now you can also download your CCAP agreement for your own records. Your secure sign-in to EdLink is your signature in this, um, in this instance, okay? In all instances of the application. Okay, so down here, these are just, it, they were pulled out of this agreement up here. The state finds these to be some of the most important areas. And we just want to make sure that you're getting the full gist of the responsibilities and benefits of CCAP and as well as your children, okay? So we have to initial all of these. Now your rates and fees, remember these are your rates and fees from last year or from whenever you changed them. Um, if there is an age group that you are not caring for, you still need to enter a one. EdLink does not accept zero, okay? So you'll still need to at least put a one in there. Now, be sure that these rates match what you've provided to your parents in your memo, the rates and change memo. Make sure that they are the same, okay? Because that will be verified. Okay, do you charge a registration fee? If you do, then simply... Tell us how much that fee is. This fee is charged per child annually. And you charge a transportation fee. And we'll say $10 per child annually. Okay. Now, if you don't charge any fee for this or this, just leave it at zero. Okay. Okay. Um, there's no, no problem leaving those at zero and then just select no. Okay. So the time and attendance agreement, you're going to download the CCAP 14 EA form and sign it. And you're going to upload it. You know, scan it in, upload it. The way we've done all the other documents so far. Okay. And I would recommend that you wait till that's fully processed just so that your computer doesn't lock up. Okay, so director right now is synonymous with provider, so don't worry, make sure you choose director. Okay, and you're gonna enter your date of birth. Okay, let's see, here we go. Now, EdLink is not going to verify these dates of birth, okay, so you need to make sure that they are correct. Okay, so here's where we would do our document upload. So I'm going to kind of breeze through there's quickly. If you'll look 
below each one of these, there's an excerpt that tells you exactly what is needed from you. These are also in the instructions on step one that we went over. But um, if you need any explanation, now your proof of residency, make sure you read that carefully. Okay, so it's asking uh, for let's see, examples and application instructions. So if we were to go back to return to application home, step one, And let's see, let's see here, it should be right over here. Let's see if it's within one of these. Usually it's broken out, but let's see if we can locate it here for you. If not, let me go ahead and just give that to you. Um, a lease agreement, mortgage agreement, um, electric bill, cable bill, okay, something that demonstrates just like anywhere else, you know, a proof of uh, residency, okay? So we are going to go back to application home and we're gonna go back to where we left off. We left, and of course, see how it's staying yellow? That's because I have a no match. That will never be green, <laughs> okay? So we're just gonna have to, we're gonna pretend that's green. All right, so let's go back to document upload and finish that task. Make sure you hit all of these. Documentation of ownership. Now, documentation of ownership, um, don't let that bother you. It is the, uh, it's very simple for you to do. It has, doesn't have to be anything prolific, just a letter stating that I am so-and-so and I'm the owner of such and such, you know, provide your provider number located at blah, blah, blah. And then you'll date and sign that in front of a notary and that will be sufficient. Now, if you do for some reason have a business license, then you can also download a form or a downloadable document, which is proof of your uh, ownership from Secretary of State's website. Most of you will be writing out a letter for in-home or family home and just having it notarized. Okay. And this is taking a little bit. Again, this is a training environment for me. So we do have some little iffy things here and there. So I'm going to go ahead and refresh. And I'll probably have to reopen the application, which is fine. I'd rather do that than watch the swirl. Let's see. Yep. I'm probably going up. Oh, there we go. Boy, that was slow in coming, but that's okay. I almost signed out and signed back in. Yeah, if you get an eternal swirl like that, um, sometimes... Uh, well, usually it's your internet or um, a combination. Um, the system may be updating as well, too. Also, your document may be way too large. Okay, that's that's a pretty high uh, occurrence. Okay, make sure you use that scan profile that I provided to you guys on the EdLink training page. It will keep your files small and very clear. Okay, it's very easy to do. Social security cards, their identification, you need front and back. Okay. And then here's your IRS form. If you don't have the documents that you need, um, most of you might be using your social, but if you do have an EIN or need one still, you can go to irs.gov and complete that form, okay? Vehicle information, remember I said I'd be picking them up, or excuse me, taking them on field trips. So they want to know um, whether or not have liability insurance. Okay, proof of liability. And then the rates verification. This is that letter that you would present to your parents letting them know what the rates are. Okay? That's why we want to make sure that all your rates across the board are the same. Okay, and if we've gotten them all uploaded, Wait for that last one there. We're gonna hit save and continue. Now, that page previously with the document uploads, it will allow me to upload one or two or none and come back to it. And it'll just give me an incomplete batch. It'll ask you a question. Are you sure you want to proceed? There's missing information and just hit yes. And you do that for any pages that you wanna breeze by, but you know you wanna come back to later. So double check your banking information. Make sure that it's input correctly. Take your time. Check the parishes. 
Okay. And then down here, if you did not do this last year, then you're going to download the direct deposit authorization form and upload it. If you, um, if it looks as if it did not retain yours from last year, then just use that same file that you completed last year or download another and browse and upload it again, okay? And hit save and continue. Now, this means we're almost finished. So the renewal summary, I would recommend that you not try to decipher this, okay? And it can be um, quite tedious. And if you look, there's 16 pages, okay? So what I would recommend is that you go back to your application homepage and you start on page, or this one right here, because this is just instructions. Make sure that you've made all the changes that you want to make, that you need to make, okay? And then you'll go back to this renewal summary and simply hit confirm and it checks them all and save and continue, okay? Now, notice how I was not taken to a payment screen and that's because of this right here, okay? Unless everything is green, you will not be taken to the payment screen. Do not pay until all of your badges are green. And you could say, well, you wouldn't be able to go to the payment screen unless they were all green, just in case. It's just a good measure to make sure that everything has been uploaded and completed, and you will pay when you are ready to submit. Okay, once all of these are green, you will submit the renewal application at the bottom. This will be dark teal. Okay, and once I submit the application, I'll go back to my dashboard, and I'm gonna see it here, but it's gonna say pending. This means I still I'm still working on it. So if I started this on Monday and didn't have a chance to get back to it till Thursday, it'll be on your dashboard and you simply hit edit and it takes you back to where you left off, okay? But once you submit, once you submit and it says pending, you can only view it or withdraw it. Now, if you cancel or withdraw an application, that information cannot be retrieved. You will have to complete that information again. Okay, but this is where you'll see a record of those. And once it has been approved or the application is complete, it will drop off of the screen and your information will already be updated in the system. Okay, and I want to show you the training page real quick Okay, before we stop. So the training page, all you have to do is type in LA EdLink Training, Louisiana Training, Louisiana EdLink Training, I'm sorry. Um, you can also go to the Louisiana Believe site and just put in EdLink Training here, like I did here. And it'll be the very first link that pops up. Okay, right here is the only place you should be submitting a support ticket. This is the only place you should submit a support ticket. Please do not use the generic provider support. Okay, we can support you here and we will route you to the right person, whether it's CCAP, KinderConnect, or anything else. Now, KinderConnect does have its own support site, and that is edlinkinfo.com. Okay, edlinkinfo.com, and they will assist you. And you have uh, webinars, um, instructional material, and everything else there for your parents as well as the providers. But down here, you will see all of the manuals that you need. Okay, the in-home application user guide is down here. Uh, this, uh, the video will be posted shortly, so you'll have that there as well, okay? But up here under the general, you'll see the scanning, computer basics, resetting your password, and the events of our training sessions, okay? And that is it. And thank you so much for attending this session. And if you have any questions, you know how to contact us through that support ticket system. Thank you.